He is truly amazing, God. And I guess if I have to say if there's a, a number one for the year 2022, I know it's 2023, but if a song, I have to say same God is my song. I love always. Don't get me wrong. Always ranks up there probably number two, but sorry. Same God. I love that song. And I told my sound man, <laughs> my music man, <laughs> I request a song and he finds it somehow or another. <laughs> so praise God, because the same God back then is the same God now, just like Amy said Thursday night. Same God answering prayers back then is the same God now, Dad. And that's what we're going to do tonight. You're going to we're going to take a look at David's life and we're going to take a look at yours. Amen. So we're going to be in Psalms 42 tonight first. But he is an awesome God. He's the same God. He doesn't change. We are the ones that change. We change. We change our attitude. We change our, our lifestyle. We change our thoughts. But he doesn't. He doesn't change. He is constant. And like I said, he is consistent. You can, he's a constant variable. He's not one of those variables that change that you have to worry about that's going to change. He's constant. You know that it stays, that it's not going to be fluctuating. He doesn't fluctuate. He's constant. But in Psalm 42 tonight, we're going to look, you know, David, David wrote a lot of songs he would sing his prayers to God. He would write out, you know, there were poems, there were songs, his prayers to God. A lot of songs have been turned from the Psalms, have been sung from the Psalms. Hymns, gospel songs have been sung from the Psalms. But we'll just start at verse 1 and then we'll go on. But as the, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so paineth my soul after thee, O God. As the deer of the heart paineth after the water brooks, so does my soul. What's water? When you need water, you got to have water, right? When you need water and you're painting, you're really needing, when you ever watch a dog with their tongue and they're painting and they're trying to get to water, they really need water. When we really need God, so does my soul long after you. Paineth that my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? This is for the living God. It thirsts after. You know, like when a dog, you know, they, they, that tongue is, is going and they, they got to find it. They're like searching the water in a puddle, whether it's in, a, in an old whatever sitting around. They got to find water. They're looking for it. Are we looking for God that way? Is our soul thirsting after God wherever we can, that we can find him? It says, my tears have been my meat day and night. While they continually say unto me, where is thy God? Have you been there? David was. His tears had been his meat for day and night. He found himself in a place that all he could do was cry. Cry out to God. Everything around him was falling apart or felt like it was falling apart or closing in on him. And his tears had been his meat, Dad, day and night. While they continually say unto me, where's your God? Taunting him, where's your God, David? Where's your God, David? He delivered you before, but where is he now? Where's your God, Nikki? He's delivered you before, but why are you going through this now? Why do you got to suffer this now? I'm not saying that you're suffering now, but that's just an example. He will. The enemy will say it. People will say it. Where's your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I'd gone with the multitude. I'd went with them to the house of God. 
with a voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept the holy day. I'd gone into the house of God. I'd praised him. I'd kept the holy day. I poured out my soul to him. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Even though his soul was cast down. Oh, why art thou cast down within me? His soul was cast down. He said, I will still praise him for his countenance on me. For He, what he has given me. For what he has done for me. David knew him. That even when people taunted him and said, where's your God? Even when things were falling apart and in tears, all he could do at night was cry unto God and cry before him. He knew that God was still God, Nikki. He's still that same God that gave that little boy courage to come over a hill and fight a giant, to slay a bear, to slay a lion. Even in his disobedience even when he numbered the people he said I'll fall into the hands of a just God because his mercy his anger won't won't always be kindled he said but men will never quit said but he'll have mercy even when it looks difficult It's not always going to be easy. You know, the old saints used to say, stay in power. Stay in power. Had to stay when everything looked rough. Some stay in power, what they'd say, which meant stay put. Not to run and pick up your tent when it got rough, but some stay in power. David had some stay in power. David had some stay in power that even when he all he could do was cry, And weep. He said, For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill of Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy ways and thy billows are gone over me. Everything had just crashed in on him had flooded his soul. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in, and in the night song and shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. <laughs> the God of my life. <laughs> Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness. That loving kindness. He will command his loving kindness and his night song (laughs) over me (laughs) and bring joy in the morning. (laughs) And his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why am I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? My God, my rock. He's a constant, steady rock. A lot of rocks are immovable. The bigger ones, unless you have machinery in it. At that time, it was unmovable. And God is unmovable, unshakable. Nothing can shake him. Because of the oppression of the enemy, sometimes the enemy will oppress us. But all we got to do is cry out to that rock. My rock of ages, the same God. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages. I'm standing on your promises. What David do? I'm standing on your faithfulness. I'm standing on your promises. Just like the old saying, they knew that, that staying power, they'd call it. You'd hear old saying, they'd call it, dad would tell you, they called it staying power. You'd stay. You wouldn't run when things got rough, when the billows just seemed to flood you. There was some staying power. As with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? 
Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance. And my God, I will yet praise him, who is my health of my countenance. And my God, my God. Go with me to Romans 8. You see, David was a man after God's own heart, right? He was a ch child. He was an Is Israelite, right? He was God's chosen people. Let's go to Romans and see what you become. Romans 8, chapter, or chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There's no condemnation. There's no shame. There's no guilt. There's no more to them that walk after the spirit, that walk after Christ Jesus, that walk in his covenant, in that newness of life. The same God that David had, I have, because of Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from sin and death. I'm no longer under sin and death. I have been made free by the law of the spirit in Christ Jesus. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, because see, he was born of a virgin, conceived of the spirit. Man had no, there was no corruptible seed involved. Condemned sin in the flesh, in the likeness of sinful flesh. He came like us, behooved him to come like his brethren. Condemned sin in the flesh, walked and condemned it in the flesh. He walked perfect, or the, or the plan couldn't have been. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be filled in us. Who? That might be fulfilled in who? In us. That all righteousness would be fulfilled in us. That same God that David held on to, he's my God. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. See, I can choose to walk after the flesh and say, oh, God. They, how am I going to prove that you are God? How am I going to show that you you haven't moved for this time? What what, what am I going to? What am I? Who be what he? You know he says, as the says, you know. But uh, or I can say, God, you got it. You will deliver me. You will prove that you are God. You don't have to prove me, but you will prove that you are God. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So what are we attending to? What are we minding? The things of the flesh or the things of the spirit? For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. See, the enemy wants to get us into that carnal way of thinking. The carnal ideals of how am I going to fix it? How am I going to solve it? When he's the same God back then that he is today. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, and is for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. It can't be subject to God. 
It won't come under rule to God because it, it thinks that it doesn't need God, doesn't need what God has. I, I can fix it. I can do it. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> I don't uh, justify itself. The flesh will justify itself. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. He will quicken you and make you a living soul. Amen. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye, ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. To mortify the deeds of the body, to crucify the flesh, to daily, to bring into subjection all things unto Christ. To check our fruit and bring it into what God says it should be. That our lives should be. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So if I'm led by the Spirit of God, I become a son of God, a daughter of God. I have become his child. I have just like David, that he will be there for me. Oh, why is my soul downcast? And there may be times you feel that way. But we got to say, I will yet praise him. I will yet praise him for his health, my health to my countenance. And he is my God. He is my God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby you cry, Abba, Father, and Amy was on it tonight. We've received adoption letters. We've got adoption papers that say that we've been adopted by the great I am. That we have be now can call him Abba, which means daddy. That he is ours, dad, because of Jesus. Because of the gift that Jesus did, I have access to the Father. And I could call him Abba. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. That means whatever Christ gets, I get. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. If we suffer with him, we may be glorified together. That's why the disciples could say, we praise you that we could suffer this for his glory. Find it again. I'm sorry I lost my place. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. <laughs> the things that we're suffering right now cannot compare to what the glory is going to be revealed in us, Dad. Can't begin to what we feel, the wave of sorrow of the billows that, from deep, that flows over us cannot begin. To compare to the what glory is going to be revealed in us. When we truly understand that God is God. And that we hold on to him. That I will praise him. Even though my soul is downcast. Even though the people say where is your God. Even though they say whatever they say. He is still God. 
That's how the old saints had to stay in power. They knew that God was God, that no matter what come, no matter whether they had whatever, they were still going to praise him. That's why Clyde could say, whether he healed me or not, he's still God. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the Son of God. He's just waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. What we're going to be. What he's just waiting for us to grow up in to be and become and do. (laughs) For him, that his righteousness might be fulfilled in us. But he is. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body, the redemption of this fleshly tabernacle, to be changed, to shuffle off the, the mortal to immortality. Amen. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why do he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. Wait for it. Earnestly wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Spirit. Have you ever just got down and sobbed and moaned and and just prayed and couldn't get a word out, but it just, the Spirit will make intercession for you. Will pray the perfect prayer for you. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Jesus ever liveth to make intercession for you, and he knows the hearts And he's making intercession for you every day. Ever liveth to make intercession. According to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. To be conformed to an image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestine them, he also called. And whom he called them, he also justified. And whom he justified them, he also glorified them. Amen. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son... Not, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If he didn't spare his own son, why would he not freely give us things? He says, freely give us all things. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for slaughter. Nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. 
For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. David knew that no matter how much those billows rolled in or how downcast his soul was, he knew that God would somehow, somewhere come on the scene and deliver him. And that's what we got to know, that if we walk after the spirit and not after the flesh and seek after God, all these things because we become a child of God. We become a son of God, a daughter of God. We have access to all the promises. The same God that heard the, promise, the, the prayers back then is the same God that will deliver today. And all we got to do is believe and hold on to him. Keep that. Stay in power. Know that he is God. And that it's not us that does anything, but it's all because of Christ. Because God loved us enough to send him to do it, that he will freely give us all things, he says. He said, that's his word. That's not mine. That's his word. David says, he's health to my countenance. He'll raise my spirits. He'll lift my spirits. When it feels like the whole world's rushing in. And closing in. And there's times, I don't know about you all, but this week's been a rough one. But I thank God that he is God. That same God that delivered back then is the same God now. And we got to hold on to him. And he's more than able. That when people say, where's your God? Say, he's coming. He's there. Just watch. He's, he'll be here. He's still God. He's still God. And you know, I was thinking about it because I love, I love chosen. You know, because um, I was, tr- I t- tried to get Amy to watch it, and, and she got Steve to watching it. But you know, the new episode. I don't know. I don't want to spoil it for you if you haven't watched it. But they come back from doing all the miracles. They want a high, on a spiritual high, as you can say. They, they were walking on cloud nine. You ever done that? And something happens and everything feels good. And then all of a sudden the bottom just falls out of it. And you know, he's, Jesus even told them in the scriptures. He says, don't rejoice that you have power to do. Because they said we could heal and we could have power over demons. He says not to rejoice in that. But to rejoice that your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. That you have access to the Father. That because of Jesus, you have access. It all it belongs on him. That it didn't matter about the healings. It didn't matter about the deliverances. It was Jesus that your name, that you have been set free from the sin and death because of Jesus. That your name was written in the Lamb's book of life. That's what we should rejoice, that I am his and I belong to him, that no matter what comes, no matter how high I am or how low I am, I am still his. No matter what I feel, how the frustration goes, because it will come. It'll come. Life has its way. Life has tragedies. It rains on the just and the unjust. And you're going to have them. But it's how I react to him. It's what I do. Do I seek him? Do I call out on him? He said, my, my tears have been my meat both day and night. Why? Because he'd go and lay at an altar of God and say, God, I need you. Oh, God, oh, God, I need you. That's why I said I love that song. I love that song. I need you now. And that's what David would do. He would go and he would lay at an altar when, he, when his son was dying. He fasted and laid at the altar of prayer and cried out. Even though he knew he was, had been disobedient to God and that he was under the judgment hand of God. 
But he still went and laid at the altar and cried out to God. And they thought, oh God, we tell him that, that his son has dead. He surely will something happen to him because he's been in there praying and, and wasting away. They tell him he gets up and eats because he understands he accepted the will of God. He accepted what God had said. Even though it was a hard acceptance, he still accepted what God said it would be. Because why? He knew that God loved him. That it would be okay. That through the line, because it was his disobedience, he knew that he messed up to begin with. But that it would be all right. That God loved him and he would take care of it. But I can go be with him. God loved him that much. And you see how much greater does God love us because of the gift that was given for me and you. And we're to rejoice because it's nothing that I do, nothing I'll ever do, but it's because he of that salvation that we've been given, that our names are written in that Lamb's Book of Life. That's why I'm to rejoice in hope. He is the hope. That he talks about in Romans. Nothing can separate me from that love. Nothing. Paul says, neither height nor depth nor principality. Nothing. Nothing can separate me from that love. Only me deciding to walk out after my flesh. To giving up and not staying. That stay in power, like I said, staying in his arms, staying in his safety. I want to bail ship and run a different direction. Go back to what? To Egypt, like the children of Egypt did. What was familiar? Even back to slavery, they wanted to go. Why? Because it was familiar. It was easy. What do we do? We go back to familiar, we go back to the easy. Because sometimes difficult, it's like, mm, this is hard. But if we'll stick with it, that discipline like Steve talks about, and stick with it and follow after him, we'll see the fruit of it. We'll see the reward of it. Because he's the same God. Same God David had, I have. And I can rejoice in that. Because of Jesus gave me access to that God. See, I didn't have access to him before. I was a Gentile. I was not a Jew. I was not the chosen people. I was considered a dog. No hope, an infidel. But because of Jesus, I had access to the Father. What an awesome gift of the Savior. But don't let the enemy... Say, downcast your soul so much. Know that all you have to do is cry out. Call out to him. And know that the same God that delivered back then will deliver now. Same God. No matter what comes, no matter what goes, no matter who comes, who goes, no matter, it could be anything. He is still life and death. We've experienced a lot of death lately. In the past couple of years, or ten years, we've or five, even five years, we've we've had a lot of death. But God is still God. And He's still taking care of us. He is still the same God. And He loves us and He wants the best for you. He wants the very best for you. And all we got to do is cry out and obey him. Walk after the spirit. Walk, crucify, mortify the deeds, kill him. Kill the deeds of the flesh. Mortify means, uh, you know, to destroy the works of the flesh. Don't let them be in you. Let the fruit of the spirit come alive. That the Father can be glorified. Amen? That the Father, herein is the Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. 
Was that John 15, I believe? Eight? Herein is the Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. Fruit. What's he talking about? Fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness. His loving kindness. He will command his loving kindness over me. Amen. All we got to do is cry out to him. Amen. We're going to have an altar call tonight. But he is God. He is a good God and the same God. Same God as Abraham called to. Same God that walked with Enoch. Same God that delivered the three Hebrew children out of the fire. Same God that brought manna on the plains. Same God that brought water out of a rock. The same God that turned the sundial backwards. The same God that held the sun still for Joshua and them in the battle. He is the same God that brought down the walls of Jericho. He's the same God. Amen. Same God that prepared a fish. He got it ready for Jonah, for his disobedience. Read it. It says he prepared a fish. He made it ready to eat Jonah. Because of his disobedience. Amen? That's our God. And he's the same God. Same God that fed 5,000, that fed the 4,000. Amen? He's the same God that can heal the leper, that can heal the blinded eyes, that can set a soul free. Amen? That can deliver you from sin and bondage. He's the same God. Amen?